in a previous video, link will be up here somewhere. Who knows which side. I managed to get FreeBSD 15 installed, but I also managed to screw up the boot code because I did a, a ZFS update. So in this one, we're going to have a quick look at the rescue disk and, and how we would sort that out. So we're booting from our USB. Now, if you remember what I said in the last video, I said that um, the ISO was a bit screwed up, so I couldn't use it. Now, since then, the ISOs have been updated. This one now works, so we'll use this one. And if you can see, I'm at my um, UEFI BIOS prompt, and now I'm going to be booting from the, the SanDisk uh, USB stick, and I'm going to use the UEFI one. So this will boot into basically an ISO image. So let's do that. Here we go. So we're going to... Gotta love that. My mouse has just kicked in. So we're going to go to the live CD. So you've got three choices. Install, shell, live CD. We're going to go to live CD. It's the last one. There we go. That's it. So log in as root. There won't be a password. Let's clear that because we don't need it. Now, what do we do? We're basically a, a, um, a live CD of FreeBSD. And we can do a lot of things with this. We can recover errors from the disk. We can, we can essentially reinstall with this as well. So let's, um, let's check out the disk, shall we? Let me just check something. Gpart show. So there's DA. And just above it is, is probably... There we go. Uh, ADA0. Right. So that's what we wanted to know. So it's ADA0. That's where we've installed FreeBSD. And if you look down the list here, you've got ADA0, and it's a, a GPT a petition table. So you've got the first petition, which is the EFI. Then you've got some free space of one meg for who knows what reason. Then you've got number two, which is FreeBSD hyphen swap, and that's eight gig. And then you've got FreeBSD ZFS, which is 230 gig. The one we're going to concentrate on for this video is number one, and that's the EFI petition. So let's let that finish. Clear that because we don't need it. What we're essentially doing here is reinstalling the boot code over the top of the existing one. And to do that, it's, it's just one command. It seems scary. This is where you can actually completely balk it if you get it wrong. How did you know? Oh, what's really going to bake your noodle later on is, would you still have broken it if I hadn't said anything? So we need to remember what our disk ID is. So it's ADA0 and petition 1. Remember that. G part, boot code, minus B, and it'll be boot, PMBR, minus P, and it will be boot GPT ZFS boot. And we want to install it to the first petition on ADA0. That makes sense? Hope so. This is where things can go awry. Let's see what happens. It's done it. Right, so let's have a quick look at the uh, the petition table now. There you go. So it all looks the same still. Where this might go funny is if there's a mismatch on the version of the rescue disk to what's installed on your FreeBSD system. So it, it is probably best to create a rescue disk or an ISO, to download an ISO matching the version of what's installed on your system. Otherwise, it could go very, very wrong. Remember that. I am not responsible for you. <laughs> For you mismatching your versions. Things are still recoverable if you if you balk it, unless you write it over the wrong petition, in which case you're you're right out of luck. Now, some newbies, if you want to call them that, people that are new to FreeBSD, it may be easier, assuming you haven't got much data on this system, just to reinstall. But for the most part, you can recover most of this. So let's reboot this and see what happens. 
Now I'm going to pull out the USB as soon as that finishes. There we go. Rebooting. Let's see what happens. To be honest, I, I haven't done this in a very long time, so it may well be wrong. Let's see. <laughs> Bad. Uh, dear. I love it when things go wrong. Oh, that's not a good start. It doesn't show any device. <laughs> Did I kill the... Uh... Let's try that. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. <laughs> Got to wonder what's happened there, haven't you? You just, just love it. On a Wednesday morning, and things don't go your way. All right. You OS. Let's find out why it went wrong, shall we? Go away. Right. So, we want two part show. Floor. So, it's still all there. I'm just wondering why it didn't work. Try again. Oh, I forgot something there. Try again. See, it's quite possible that this is the old way of doing it. So we'll try it. A newer way. You never know. Let's, let's whip through this. Look. So let's try. Oh. Let's try that. See if it works. No. Now, as I say, I've done this a long time ago. Interestingly, it's not seeing that disc. So, what did I do wrong then? <laughs> Whoa we what a whirlwind. Okay, so I went away and I did a little bit of research and I, I found out what was going on. After multiple reboots, booting from USB sticks and, and all of that kind of jazz, what I actually ended up doing was uh, new FSing the EFI petition and copying over the bootloader from the rescue disk. And to do, I'll, I'm going to show you how I did it. We'll we'll do it here. Um, so let me just boot back into that rescue disk. Where is it? That one. Reboot. <laughs> it was a pain in the bottom. Uh, Sand disk. UAFE. Right. Yeah. That was a very strange experience. So I don't remember it being that much hard work before. Anyway, I'll do it again so you can see what I did. <laughs> oh dear. All right, so live CD. No, that's not live CD. Cancel, cancel, live CD. Get rid of that. Uh, G part, whoa. Show ADA zero, right, so. There we go. So it's a GPT petition table. The one that I manipulated was the first petition, the EFI. So here's what I did. I did a new FS equals MS DOS ADA DA P1. So that's the EFI petition. There we go. That happened. I then mounted it. Mount minus T 
MS DOS FS Dev ADA 0P1 and I did that on mount. I CD'd to my mount and there should be nothing there. <laughs> so I did make the minus P and I did it as EFI boot and I CD'd into the boot and I copied boot loader dot EFI into that location. I then moved <laughs> uh, the loader to boot x64 dot EFI which left me with that boot x64 dot EFI. Like I said, it was a bit of a palaver. I don't remember it being this difficult a few years ago when uh, when this kind of thing happened to me before, especially after doing what ZFS update told me to do. Hey ho, let's reboot and see what happens. I'm going to pull out the USB now. See what happens. It probably won't work again now. Yeah, there we go. So. <laughs> I don't know why it was doing that. I don't much care. The point is, I've got my operating system back, and it's working. Now, I must confess, I didn't do this on FreeBSD 15. This is actually FreeBSD 13, because it was uh, a smaller ISO that I had installed. So, anyway, <laughs> there are a lot more things you can do with the Rescue Disk, and it's well worth checking out and going through all the tools that are on there. But essentially, it's like... Uh, running a full version of live cd or freebsd and you get all the access to the tools give me a thumbs up if you like this video <laughs> oh, i had to work for my money there don't forget to subscribe for more content coming soon discord server in the links below and as always i'll see you in the next video take care